When it comes to services on Android, you basically have two categories, started services and bound services. In this video, I'm gonna talk about bound services, when you wanna use a bound service, and then we'll do an example of how to set up a bound service and use it in your projects. Also, I'm gonna be using the architectural design pattern known as model view view model, otherwise known as MVVM. MVVM is my favorite design pattern, so I'm trying to use it more and more in my videos whenever I can. For those of you who are unfamiliar with services on Android, here's a quick overview of what they are and typically what they're used for. A service is an application component that can perform long running operations in the background with no user interface. The no user interface part is extremely important. That means you can leverage services to execute long running operations without displaying anything on the screen. So if the application is sent to the background, you could design a service to continue running even though the app is not visible to the user. That brings me to the next property of services. They have their own life cycle independent of the activity or the fragment that they're created in. Essentially, this is the property that gives services the ability to continue running even if the application is not visible to the user. By default, services are unaffected by activity or fragment lifecycle events such as on destroy, on pause, and so on. Here's some of the things that you need to watch out for when using services in your projects. By default, services do not run on a background thread. This is a very common misconception, but I totally understand why people often get confused by this. The Android documentation describes services like this. A services is an application component that can perform long running operations in the background with no user interface. The part that says in the background could easily be interpreted as a background thread but that is definitely not the case. By default, services operate on the same thread that they're instantiated on. In most cases, that's gonna be the main thread. If you're interested in this topic, leave a comment below, and if there's enough interest overall, then I'm gonna do a video on it. But this video is focused on services that do not run on background threads or don't have threads running in them. It's just a plain old service. The second thing that you need to watch out for is how to determine which type of service to use. There's a few types. There's bound services and there's started services. Now this can get a little confusing, so pay close attention to what I say here. Technically, a bound service can also be a started service, but a started service cannot be a bound service. I'm gonna talk more about this in the application demo, but essentially a started service is started up by calling start service or start foreground service. A bound service, on the other hand, can start two different ways. It can start when some other component binds to it, so the literal act of something binding to it will start the service, or you could start the service using start service or start foreground service and then bind to it. Both work, but have slightly different properties. Like I said, I'm gonna talk more about this in the demo ahead. Now that you've had a short review on services, I'm sure you're wondering what exactly is a bound service and why should you care about them? I think the best way to think of a bound service is to compare it with a server. When you start a service with the intention to bind something to it, you essentially have the intention to start a server and bind to it with some kind of a client. At its core, you're defining a client-server interaction. The service acts as a server, and some other component acts as a client. The client could be an activity, it could be a fragment, it could be a smartwatch, or it could be some other application completely different. So why should you care about bound services? Personally, I like to use bound services when I know there's going to be some kind of consistent or frequent communication between an activity and the service, or a fragment in the service, whatever, same thing. Like if a service is streaming music, for example, information like the playback progress needs to be constantly sent to the activity or the fragment, so that way the user knows what's going on. Think about the seek bar. Imagine when you're watching a video or you're streaming audio, you're always watching that seek bar. That seek bar data is coming from a service and getting sent to an activity or a fragment. In a nutshell, that's where the real advantage of using a bound service lies. When you need to communicate with it on a consistent basis, by binding to it, you can communicate with a service very easily. All right, let's do an application demo. Here's the app that we're gonna be building in the course. It's a very simple app with a service, a background service, that's supposed to mimic what it's like to be running a long running task or some kind, of a, some kind of an operation that takes a long time. So if I press the button that says restart, the service is restarted, the progress is restarted, and if I press start, 
it starts a runnable in the background to mimic what it's like to run a long running task. As you can see, I just pressed pause there, which then pauses the interaction. And if I press start again, it runs to completion, and then I can restart the whole thing if I want to. So what's happening here is when the activity first starts, when the activity first comes into view, it's starting a service, and then it's binding to that service. Then when I press the start button, it's initiating a runnable that exists in the service that runs until completion. Because it's a bound service, I can very easily communicate with the service uh, by pressing pause or start or pause or start and just I can just continuously do that with no issues because the activity is bound to the service so it communicates very efficiently with the service. And this demo application is built using MVVM, the architectural design pattern, which as you probably know is my favorite architectural design pattern. I wanted to give more more I want to give more examples of MVVM, so I thought this was this was definitely a good one to do. If you're not familiar with MVVM or model view view model, you might want to check out my blog post or my video on my YouTube channel about MVVM. That's going to give you a better starting point, so you'll be ready to tackle this video. Before we start with the example, I just wanted to show you where you can get a reference to the code that I'm going to be using in the demo. So you can go to my GitHub page and go to bound services with MVVM. You can see the URL up here. And if you ever get stuck, just grab, grab the uh, master branch and you can take a look at the code here and um, compare it with yours just to make sure that you got everything right. Um, other than that, let's get started with the demo. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the build.gradle app file and the dependencies. We're using MVVM, the architectural design pattern known as model view view model. So we need to get the life cycle dependencies that I have down here. You can see them and I'm using the 1.1.1 version. Okay, so uh, next let's talk about the layout file. If I open up activity main here, I have a pretty simple layout. I just have a relative layout with a progress bar, a text view, and a button. So you can see on the screen you have the progress bar, the text view, and the button. Uh, pretty, pretty straightforward, nothing too exciting here. Then if we go into main activity, the only components that I've defined already are the progress bar, the text view, and the button. I've attached them to their IDs down here, and I've attached an onclick listener to the button. That's all. Other than that, we're going to be building everything from scratch. Okay, so to start off, we're going to be building the service class. So I'm going to right click on the main package directory, I'm going to go to new Java class, and I'm going to call it my service. I'm going to extend this class by service. And you can see it's giving me a warning, I'm going to press Alt Enter and click on implement methods and insert the on bind method. This is the only method that's required if you're using a service. Whoops. Obviously, you'll probably end up putting more methods inside. But this is the only one that's required to make that warning go away. Or sorry, the error go away. You can see I'm also getting a warning up here telling me that this service is not registered in the manifest, meaning that if I go into the manifest, that service is not in here. So I can either add it by pressing Alt Enter on here and going to add service to manifest, or I could manually add it just by going service and then declaring it like that. Every service that you make in your Android projects must be declared in the manifest. That's what it says in the documentation. Okay, we're done in the manifest for now. I'm going to go back to the service and start declaring some variables. The first thing is a log for debugging. The next thing we need to build is a custom class that extends binder. And I'll write it out and then we'll talk about it. So public class my binder extends the binder class. And inside here, I want to do my service, get service. So it's going to return a service object. And I'm going to return a my service dot this. So I'm essentially returning an instance of this service, or uh, some might call this a singleton. It's a it's a reference of this service, a reference to this service class. So what is this binder thing? The purpose of the my binder class is to provide an access point for retrieving a service instance. The iBinder interface is the base interface used for a remotable object. That probably sounded a little confusing, so let me just kind of summarize that for you. Basically, all you need to know about this is that it's used to get an instance of the service inside whatever you want to bind to it. In the case of this example, we're going to be binding to it using main activity. So main activity will be the client and the service will be the server. The my binder is going to help facilitate that binding or that connection between the activity and the service. 
Okay, so now let's declare a bunch of other variables that we're going to need inside the service. The first is going to be a iBinder object, and I'm going to call it mBinder, and set it equal to myBinder. So notice that the myBinder class is what we're using right here. Next is a handler object. So handler m m handler. We need a integer for the progress. And we need a boolean. So private boolean m is paused. The purpose of this service is to simulate some kind of a long running operation. All I'm going to do is use a runnable and a handler to increment an integer value. That integer value is going to be the m progress variable that you see right here. And then the max value is going to be the maximum value that it gets incremented to. Once it reaches the max value, then it will stop. Then obviously the m is paused boolean is going to be used to either pause that runnable or let that runnable continue running. Next, I'm going to insert the onCreate method. All services have an onCreate method. This gets called when the service is first started. So inside here is where we want to initialize our objects. So I'll write new handler for our handler, and I can write m progress equals zero, m is paused equals true to start, and max value equals, let's say 5,000. And since we have our binder object, I'll also return the binder right here. This is how, if I, if I didn't mention it earlier, this is how we're gonna kind of facilitate the communication between main activity and the service. What happens when we bind main activity to the service is it returns this mBinder object, and then we can use that to get a reference to the service inside main activity. Now I'm going to build the method for pretending to do that back, back, blah, 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 simulating that background operation. I'm going to call it public void start pretend long running task. So there's no questions as to what this does. It's going to be pretending to do a long running task. And I'm going to just write it out and then we're going to talk about it because normally I can't talk very well when I'm trying to write these out. So we're going to use a runnable. Then inside the run method of the runnable, we wanted to check if the progress is greater than or equal to the maximum value. Or it's paused. If either of those conditions are met, that means that we want to stop this runnable. So I'll say removing callbacks. And I want to remove the callbacks from the handler. And then I'm going to have a method for pausing. So pause, pretend, uh, long running task. I haven't created this method, but I'm going to. Uh, otherwise, then we want to uh, update the progress. So m progress plus equals 100. So we're going to be incrementing the progress by 100 each time. And then m handler dot post delayed. And I want to reference the runnable. And then we want to do this same operation again in 100 milliseconds. That's why I'm passing 100 here. And then of course you need to start this whole process. So down here I need to call m handler post delayed and then reference the runnable and the time that it's going to post in. So actually I think I did an okay job of explaining as I went there, but let me just go through one more time. Uh, so there's a runnable. If the progress is greater than or equal to the maximum value or it's paused, then we want to stop it and pause the long running task. Otherwise we want to continue incrementing and then post again in a hundred milliseconds. So that's going to keep kind of looping this runnable over and over again until one of these conditions is met. Okay. So now let's build the method for pausing. I'm going to press alt enter and create that method inside the service. And inside here, I just want to set the is paused boolean to true, and that will effectively pause that runnable since we're checking constantly right here for if that's true. Next, we need a method for starting this task or whoops, starting this runnable. So I'm going to create a new method, private void, let's say unpause. I'll just copy this name actually, because that way I don't have to write it out. So I'm going to say, unpause pretend long running task and that means m is paused equals false and i want to start that long running task now before we move on to the next part i just need to create a couple more methods that we're going to use to retrieve values from this service the first one is actually i'm not even going to write them out because they're pretty basic um, so i'm just going to kind of 
I'm going to fast forward the video here and skip ahead to after I paste these in and then we're going to talk about them. Okay, so we have get is paused, which returns the paused Boolean, get progress, which returns the progress, get max value, which returns the max value, and then reset task, which sets the progress to zero and effectively resets that whole, that whole task, um, I guess, incrementing process or task. The next method that we're going to build is a very important one. So I'm going to press control O and I'm going to search for a method name on task removed. I'm going to insert that. So why is this method so important? This method will be called when the application is removed from the recently used applications list. I'll show you what I mean. So here I have the demo app on the screen. What I mean by the recently used applications list is if I minimize the app or I send it to the background, this is the recently used applications list. If I swipe this application out, on task removed will be triggered. So why is that important? It's important because with bound services, the service is going to continue running until the last client has unbound from the service. So for example, in, in this app, we have main activity binding to the service. That means the service will not stop until main activity has unbound from the service. But what we can do instead is to call stop self inside on task removed. That way, when the task is removed, like I just demonstrated, the service will stop. Stop self is like a hard stop for a service. That way we don't have the service still running in the background, even though the application has been closed. Because of course you don't want that. You don't want the application to continue running even when it's been swiped out by the user. That would not be a very good user experience. There's no reason for the service or the application to continue running if the user closes it. So that's it for our service here. Next, we're gonna work on the view model. Once again, if you're not familiar with MVVM, the architectural design pattern, make sure to watch my video on MVVM. It's on my YouTube channel, and that will kind of give you a good starting point so you know what I'm going to be doing here, because otherwise you're going to have no idea. So I'm going to right click on the main package directory, go to new Java class, and I'm going to call this main activity view model. I'm going to extend this by view model. And now we're ready to build the view model class. First thing I need is a log for debugging. So I'm just pressing log T there. You can see I pressed log T and I pressed enter and it gives you that output right there. Next, I'm gonna create the variables that we need. The first is a mutable live data object of type Boolean. And I'm going to call it M is progress, progress updating. The next object is a, another mutable live data object, but it's gonna be of type my service dot my binder and I'm going to call it M binder. The reason I'm keeping a reference to the my binder object inside the view model is so I can easily monitor when the activity is bound to the service and when it is unbound. Typically you do this using a boolean but I can use the object since we're using MVVM. Next I'm going to create the two live data getter methods. So live data and it's going to be of type boolean get is progress updating and return m is progress updating. And then the second one is gonna be another live data, not mutable, just live data. And that's gonna be my service dot my binder. Whoops. And I'm gonna say get my binder. Sorry, actually the source code on my GitHub is get binder, so I better keep that consistent in case any of you are checking with the code on GitHub. So you probably noticed that I'm declaring the objects as mutable live data, but I'm returning of type live data. This is because live data objects cannot be directly changed. There's no setter method. So for example, just if I was to uh, insert a constructor here, just for the sake of argument, I don't need to have anything in here. Uh, if I go, if I was to change this to live data and go M is progress updating, there's nothing to set the value. There's only get value, uh, observers, and observe. But if I was to change this to a mutable, then you can see I can set the value or post the value. And that's how you actually trigger observers to uh, trigger their on change method, which we're going to look at later. But once again, 
This is probably going to be very confusing. I'm kind of just going over the MVVM stuff really quickly because I have a video on YouTube that goes through it really slowly. So if you're confused, check that out. All right, next we're going to build a uh, very important object when it comes to bound services and the whole binding process. It's going to be a service connection object. I'm going to call it service connection equals new service connection. And as you probably guessed from the name, this is what's responsible for actually facilitating the the connection of the service to the uh, the client, which is the activity or the fragment or whatever whatever you're binding it to. So the on service connected method will trigger when the client is bound to the service, and the on service disconnected method will trigger when the client is unbound from the service. The on service connected method returns a component name object and an I binder object. The component name will represent what service is it's being bound to. That's why it's called the component name. The I binder is the link between the, the client and the server. So that's what's going to help us to actually make that connection. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So first I'll write a log saying connected to service. And then I'm going to go my service dot my binder. Binder equals my service dot my binder. And then I binder. And then we can actually connect by doing my binder dot post value and send that binder. So technically I'm actually not connecting with this line of code, but what this is going to do is it's going to send that binder object to the client where I can then make the connection. And that probably sounds confusing, but I promise it's going to make sense. Just kind of bear with me for now. I'm just kind of getting this class done and then we're going to work on main activity where you'll see the actual bind taking place. So here we want to do the same thing, but we want to pass null because that means that the client has unbound from the service. So we want to make the binder null. Okay, time to work on main activity. So I'm going to open main activity. And the first thing I want to do is declare two new objects. One is going to be the my service object. I'm going to call it M service. And the second one is going to be the view model. So main activity view model, I'm going to call it M view model. As a side note, some of you might be wondering why I didn't declare the service inside the view model. And I just want you to know that I could have. There's no real reason for or against it in this case. I just didn't see any reason to add it. We're not monitoring changes to the service. We want to monitor changes to the values in the service. So I don't see a reason to add it to the view model, but you could have. Now I'm going to scroll down here and instantiate the view model. So view model equals uh, view model providers dot of then reference the context get and we want to reference our view model class so main activity view model dot class now it's time to actually start the service and bind to it if you recall from the introduction section of this video i said the second thing that you need to watch out for is how to determine which type of service to use there's bound services and started services then i went on to say technically a bound service can also be a started service, but a started service cannot be a bound service. This is where I'm going to explain all that in detail. First, I'll write the code for actually starting the service. I'm going to insert the on resume method since that's where we're going to actually want to start the service. And now I'm going to build that method for starting it. So private void, I'll call it start service. And inside start service, we need an intent. That intent I'm going to call service intent since it's starting a service and it's going to be new intent reference the context and then reference the my service class now just call start service and pass the service intent then we want to call that in on resume that way if the activity is paused or destroyed or whatever and it comes back on resume is going to be called and then that service is going to be restarted and yes, I'm sure some of you are already wondering, that means that we're going to want to stop the service and unbind it in on pause, but we're going to, we're going to get to that in a little bit. So just hang on. So right now the service is going to start, but there's nothing that binds to the service right now. It's just a plain old service and it's starting up. Nothing is binding to it. So that's what we're going to work on next. We're going to actually bind to the service. So the next method I'm going to build is the bind service method. So bind service and inside here, it's going to be very similar. So intent service intent equals new intent this. And we, once again, we have my service dot class 
but instead of calling start service, I'm going to call bind service and then pass the service intent. We need to pass a service connection object, as you can see. We don't have that yet, so I'm just going to pass null. And then we need to pass a flag. So this flag is going to be bind auto create, meaning that the service will get created if it hasn't already when this activity or this client binds to it. So how do we get this service connection object? Because you can see I passed null here. Well, the service connection object is the one that's actually in our view model, this service connection. So we need a method to return it. So you need public service connection, get service connection, and then return the service connection. Then we can use that in here, just like that. So we reference the view model and then call get service connection. Now I'm going to call bind service underneath start service, and that will complete the starting of the service and then binding the service to the, wait, starting the service and then binding the activity to the service. I should close this so we have more room. Now, before we move on, I just want to clarify a few things. This is a bit confusing, so listen closely. As I said in the introduction, there's two ways to start a service. You can either start it using the start service or start foreground service methods, which is what we did. We used start service, or you can bind to it. Then the literal act of binding to a service will start it. For example, if I didn't call the start service method or I didn't have one, I could just call bind service inside on resume, just like this. So if I was to get rid of this and instead I just called uh, bind service, that would also start the service through the act of binding to it. The only thing is there's a limitation with starting a service this way. The service will only stay alive as long as something is bound to it. So as long as there's a client bound to it. As soon as the client unbinds, the service will be destroyed. But if you start a service using the start service or start foreground service method, then you bind to it like we've done, then the service will stay alive even if all the clients are unbound. So obviously it depends on the situation, but in this situation, that's what we're going to do. We're going to start the service and then we're going to bind to the service. That way, if for some reason the activity unbinds, which there's basically no way that could happen, but if it did happen, then the service would still continue running even though there was nothing bound to it. So during that explanation, you might have heard me say something about a start foreground service method. So you can see if I type start foreground service, that's also a method that's available. I could just pass a, whoops, a service intent to that. And uh, whoops, you need to reference the, the context if you do that. And it's also giving me an error saying, yeah, see it requires Android O. So this is the method that you want to start your service if you're using Android O. Also, if you want your service to run indefinitely. But that's not the only step. There was, a, there was a lot of changes made during Android O. You have to start the service using start foreground service, and you also need to display a notification, like a push notification while the service is running. That's gonna be outside the scope of this video, but if you guys wanna see more on services in Android O and how you can use them and how you can run them indefinitely, just leave a comment in this video, and if enough people show interest, then I will definitely make a video on it. Okay, so next is unbinding from the client. Because as I mentioned earlier, if, uh, if we're calling start service in on resume, we obviously want to unbind from the client in on pause. Otherwise, you're going to get start service ca calling over and over again, which, which we don't want. So in on pause, I'm going to call if our view model dot get binder does not equal null, meaning that the service is bound and it exists, I want to unbind the service and do view model dot get service connection. The way we have this set up, the bind service method will be called, which will then cause the on service connected method to be fired when main activity has connected. If you need a, a, a reference, you can just go in here. This is the on service connected method that I'm talking about. That's going to be fired when they, when we call bind service inside main activity. So when this method is called right here, but we still haven't actually gotten a reference to the service we've bound to it but there's no reference being saved in main activity to that service. So that's what we need to do next. Since I'm using MVVM, I'm calling post value on the binder and then passing the binder after the connection is made. So the question becomes, how do we get a reference to this binder? Because that's what we need to get a reference to the service in main activity. And the answer is we use an observer. So once again, this is an MVVM concept. So if you need a refresher on MVVM, make sure to watch my MVVM video on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write view model dot get binder, and I'm going to apply an observer 
So this new observer. And that's going to give me a reference to that my binder object when it gets set in the view model. So when it gets set right here or when it gets set right here, that's going to trigger the on change method. And this is how we get a reference to the service. So if the my binder object does not equal null, then I want to go m service equals my binder dot get service. Otherwise, then we can just set the service to null because that means that we don't have a reference to that binder anymore, or in other words, it's been unbound. Just to be clear, I could write some logs here for debugging saying connected to service. And then down here, I could say unbound from service. So that's the basic setup for starting the service, binding to it, and unbinding from it. Now we're going to work on the logic for displaying the progress on the screen. Next, we need a way to actually start the runnable or the long running task in our service. So we need to call this method right here. So in main activity, I'm going to create a new method named private void toggle updates. And I'm going to call toggle updates inside the button when it's clicked. So toggle updates. So first we want to check if the service is null, because if it's null, we don't want to call any methods on it. That would cause the app to crash. The first check I want to do is if the service.getProgress equals service.getMaxValue. In that case, that would mean it's finished. We want to reset the task and do the button set text and set that to start. Otherwise, if the service is paused, get is paused, then I want to unpause the service. Looks like I don't have an unpause method. Let me just go into the service here. Um, looks like I made that private, so I'm going to change these both to public. Now go unpause, and I also want to do view model dot set is. Looks like I don't have a. We need a setter method also in the view model for setting the is progress updating boolean. So I can create that right now. So public void set is updating. That's going to take a boolean, call it is updating. So m is progress updating. I want to do post value and set it to is updating. Now go back into main activity and do set is updating. I want to set that to true since it's unpaused. The task is unpaused. Therefore, it should be updating. And then otherwise, we want to go down into an else statement and say service.pause pretend long, long running task and view model dot set is updating and we want to set that to false. Now the last part is going to be observing changes to that is progress updating boolean because that's going to determine what the button says on the screen because we have I don't have the app open. That'll determine what this button says on the screen. It needs to be updated and also the text here needs to be updated and the value here needs to be updated. So since we're using MVVM, I'm going to attach another observer. So I'm going to do get is progress updating, set another observer, this new observer. Now we'll be notified whenever that Boolean is changed, or in other words, when the toggle updates method is called, because down here we're changing it here and we're changing it here. So when that's done, this on changed method is going to be called. So I want to check if a Boolean is true. Otherwise, or in other words, if it's updating. So if it's updating, then I want to do if the view model dot get binder dot get value does not equal null. So in other words, if it's actually bound, then if our service dot get progress equals service dot get max value, that means we're done. So that means mview model dot set is progress updating to false, because that means it's finished. Then below that, we want to set the progress. So progress service dot get progress and progress bar dot set max to the maximum value. So get max value. Then string progress. This is for displaying in the text view equals string dot value of let's do 100 to convert it to a percentage m service dot get progress. We want to divide by m service dot get max value. So that's going to display a percentage value in that text view. So that's that's this value right here. So I'm text view, set text to that progress. 
whoops, I need to add a percentage here too. So add that percentage and then just progress. But the way this is right now, it's not really good enough because we need to be receiving updates constantly. We can't just ask for an update when the status of this Boolean is changed. We need to be requesting updates to that progress constantly. So I'm gonna use another handler here, just like we did in the service class. So equals new handler. And I'm gonna use another runnable. So final runnable runnable equals new runnable. And I'm gonna take this logic and put it inside, whoops, inside here. Inside the else statement, I want to do handler.remove callbacks. Because that in that case, the value has been reached. Or in other words, the is updating Boolean is now set to true. I can make this final so that I can actually reference it inside there. And so that's good. And then right here, we want to do handler.post delayed, post delayed reference the runnable and we want to check every 100 milliseconds. So that's going to keep this runnable running and checking for the progress every 100 milliseconds. And the last little bit of logic is going to be below our runnable here. We just need a bit of logic to handle what the what the text view says and what the button or sorry, what the button says if it's not updating. So m button set text to pause. And we want to do handler uh, post delayed. We want to reference that runnable and check every 100 milliseconds. Otherwise, we need to check if it's been completed. So service, this is the same kind of thing we just did inside the runnable, equals service dot get max value, meaning it's completed. And in that case, we want to do button set text to restart because our thing is completed, our runnable is completed. And last one else, button set text to start. So if the on changed method is triggered, that means the is progress updating Boolean has been changed. And the first case is our runnable object here. If the Boolean is true, meaning the updates are needed, or the updates are being made, then we wanna retrieve the progress from the service and continue looking for progress with the post delayed method. If the Boolean is false, meaning the updates are no longer being made, we wanna remove the callbacks and stop checking for progress. Then down here, we have if the progress updates are being made, we want to set the text of the, the button to say pause. So if I press start, it needs to say pause. And we want to look for updates with the post delayed method. Otherwise, if it's false, we wanna to check to make sure it's not completed. So the progress doesn't equal the max value. If it does equal the max value, that means that this has reached the end and we should see the restart right here. Otherwise, we wanna see start. So if I click restart, that means we wanna see start right here. So that's it, that's, that's generally all the logic. So now I'm going to run it and we can test and make sure that everything is working as we expect. All right, so I'm gonna press start. Actually, I'll open the log here so we can take a look at the log output. So I'm gonna press start here. See it starts, I'll press pause. If I move this over, you can see that the progress is updating constantly after I press start. If I press start, it continues. Pause again, it'll stop. Stop. You can see it says removing callbacks. Now I'm gonna let it finish. So it ends, you get 100%. This changes to restart. You can see the callbacks are removed. Now I'm gonna restart it, and I'm going to start it up again, and I'm gonna move the app to the background. So I'm gonna start it, now I'm gonna move the app to the background. You can see it's still going. If I reopen the app, it's still running just as if I was still having the app open. Now I'm gonna try that one more time, but I'm gonna actually exit the app. So I'm gonna remove it from the recently used list. So I'm gonna press start. I'm going to then swipe the app out and it stops. So that's exactly what we expect. That means that inside of our service class, if you scroll down to the on task remove method, that is effectively stopping the service, which is exactly what we want. So now you've seen a simple implementation of a bound service using MVVM. I wanna do a little summary just because we've covered a lot here. So let's go into main activity and I wanna just kind of walk through the whole process. So the service is started in on resume by the start service method. Remember it's not started by the act of something binding to it, it's started by me calling start service and passing this intent. After that, I'm calling bind service 
and binding the activity to the service. So here the activity is acting as a client and it's binding to the service, which is acting as a server. When bind service is called, if we look in our view model, the on service connected method will be fired. At that point, the binder gets a new value posted to it. And if we go back into main activity, we are observing changes to that binder. So you can see view model get binder dot observe. So when that binder is changed right here, when the value is posted to it, the service will be able to be instantiated. So I can go service equals my binder dot get service. And that's going to give me access to all the public methods that are inside the service. So all of these public methods here, just as a reminder. So if I scroll down here, if a service is started using the bind service method, so if I, if I didn't have this code right here, if that was commented out, that would mean that the service is sort of at the mercy of whatever clients are bound to it. Meaning it's starting by the literal act of something binding to it, but it will also stop whenever everything is unbound from it. But if I was to start the service like this, which is what we did, if I unbind from it, it's still going to run. Just as another reminder, I used the architectural design pattern known as MVVM in this video. MVVM is my favorite design pattern because I think it's the best for most situations that you'll run into when developing apps. If you're looking for a really prime example of why you should use MVVM, I'll run this so I can give you a visual of what I'm talking about. Start this service, let it run to whatever percent, and then close the app. So just kind of minimize it and go do something else, play with another app for even hours, and then come back to the app and reopen it and take a look at what it shows. It's going to show the exact same thing as what it did when you closed it. That's one of the most powerful things about MVVM. It saves the state of whatever was in view and it will save it basically forever. I don't think it ever will actually destroy it unless your phone runs out of resources somehow and the garbage collector cleans it up. It will effectively stay in that state forever, which is awesome. I hope this video was helpful. I know it's a little long, but I wanted to make sure I got everything in here and explained everything thoroughly and I didn't skip anything or break up the video into pieces. So if you came this far, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, if you want to see uh, a demonstration on how to start a foreground service using Android Oreo and above, leave a comment in the comment section. And if you want to see how to start a, a, a foreground service that runs indefinitely and shows a notification, also leave a comment in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.